your scrum team effectiveness is dependent upon how good you are at the four hats we're getting ready to talk about. Let's talk about the first hat, which is teaching. To me, I think this is the most important hat in the beginning. What are you gonna be teaching? You're gonna be teaching your team about Scrum. Specifically, the Scrum guy calls out, we're gonna help the product owner figure out ways to order the product backlog. We're gonna help the product owner go away from trying to plan everything up front and then execute that plan to, let's plan a little bit, do a little bit, inspect what we did. You see, that's a different mind shift for the product owner. And the developers, we want to create an environment for developers to work together. We call that self-management in Scrum. Then you're gonna to have to teach the organization. Teach the organization what? How to help foster an environment where Scrum will thrive, like into a kindergarten class. How do we recreate the elements of a kindergarten class for the workplace? Well, how do we create that magic to give you something that you can relate to? If you've ever been to Silicon Valley, it really looks like a kindergarten class where they got like cool, chairs, chairs that look like shoes, chairs that look like a beard. If you can visualize a kindergarten class, most corporations in Silicon Valley, it looks like an, a kindergarten class for adults. And that is made that way so that you have the right colors, you have the right environment for you to unleash your creativity. Now that's a little bit about the teaching hat. Let's go to our next hat. I'm gonna pause this hat for a minute because you're not ever done with teaching. That's always something to do in terms of teaching, but I want to put that down for a moment and want to go grab the next hat, which is facilitation. Now, a little bit of history about Scrum. The Scrum Master used to be called the Master of Ceremony. Wow. Well, have you ever watched the Grammys? Have you ever watched some type of music awards? You always have somebody who was the host, the Master of Ceremony. The Scrum Master used to be called the Master of Ceremony. Why? Because we did a lot of facilitating. Now, facilitation is another hat that we wear. What are we facilitating? Well, we're facilitating the Scrum events. Now, we don't have to facilitate any event, but I facilitate them for the first 30 days. Why? Because I am teaching them. Did you catch that? I am teaching them and facilitating at the same time. Now, well, Scott, how can that be? Well, think about it. If this is my first time being on your Scrum team, whether you say you've been doing Scrum for five years, two years, or you brand new to Scrum, I'm going to start out teaching you what Scrum is, and I am going to personally facilitate the event so that I can teach and facilitate even at the same time. So let's go to Sprint Planner. For example, we have the three questions there. So watch this. So while I'm in Sprint Planning, let's say this is my very first Sprint Planning. So in sprint planning, I'm actually gonna be having my teaching hat on and my facilitating hat on at the same time. But first I'm gonna teach you, for example, hey, we have three questions that we have to answer in sprint planning. Why, what, how? Why, what, how? Okay, now I'm gonna take off my teaching hat and I'm gonna facilitate it. Hey, product owner, do you have an objective for the sprint? Yes, Scott, I do. Okay, what's your objective? I would like to get this done. Okay, developers, are you cool with that? Um. Uh, yeah, and then now we're collaborating with each other and I'm facilitating this magic to happen. And then we're gonna create a smart goal. Are y'all seeing the magic? You see, I'm teaching and facilitating at the same time. And then we go through the three questions and we as a scrum master are gonna make sure. Now here's another piece of the facilitation. I'm watching the time, tick tock, tick tock, and making sure the event does not go over eight hours. And then if we at 7.59, Hey team, we're gonna be done in one minute whether y'all ready to be done or not. That's the time box. We're making sure we play by the rules of the game. Now that is the facilitating hat. And let's go to the next hat. This is the coaching hat. Now there's a myth about coaching and that is, coaching is all about asking questions. No, that's not true. Coaching is a profession all on its own. There are people who spend their entire lives in coaching. This is a profession where you know everything as a scrum master about coaching. No, no, but you certainly need to know enough about it so that you can respect your aunt, your uncle and the profession 
in order to effectively coach somebody, you have to first ask for an invitation. For example, hey, Scott, can I give you some advice? What if Scott says no? If Scott says no, then you don't have an invitation to offer that person any coaching. See, most people didn't know that. That goes back to understanding the coaching skill, the coaching profession. And that's why you want to respect that profession by doing so. Now, what other things are we coaching the team on? We coaching them on self-management. We coaching them on being cross-functional. We coaching them on, how about we at this kindergarten class table, AKA conference room, this banquet table, and figure out how we can solve this one problem. We want to foster an environment where we need everybody to work on the problem. Now, what if a developer in IT gets stuck? Here's where your coaching hat will help you help the team get beyond what they think they're stuck on. Watch this. A developer come to me and say, hey, Scrum Master Scott, I have a block or two getting my job done. Okay, coaching hat. But why do you have that blocker? Well, the organization says we have to do it this way. Watch this. I'm going to ask a powerful question. Well, developer, what if this organization didn't have this blocker in your way? Let's eliminate that blocker for a moment. And if you could do this however you want to do it, what would you do? Developer begins to think, well, Scott, I would do this, that, and that. Hmm. But developer, why don't you do it? Are you on track? <laughs> you see, that was a coaching stance. Did I solve the developer's problem? No. I just asked questions to lead him or her down that path of self-discovery. And finally, let's go into mentorship. Now, as a mentor, now, what are you going to be mentoring the team on? You're going to mentor the team. At this particular stage, you're probably 90 days into your team to where they need to be. If we think about the movie Nanomic Feed, this is where you basically put yourself out of a job at this particular point. For me, it takes me about 90 days to get to this point. So what are you mentoring the team on? Well, at this particular point, your team is delivering amazing products. Your team is self-managing. They're working together. They're cross-functional. So, Scott, sounds like they all died in the bag of chips. Well, yeah, they are, but there's still something else they need to work on. Like what? Responsibility. But what do you mean? Well, we're not going to always get it done, so there's going to be something that they're going to say, for example, oh, the testers did this or the organization did that. There's going to always be some type of blame that goes on that gives us as a scrum master an opportunity to say, hey, is there anything that we could have done to rectify that situation or make that situation have a better outcome? And of course, there always is something that we could have done. So remember, Scrum is all about taking extreme ownership for our work, for our job, everything. Scrum is all about ownership and transparency. Now, for those of you who may like an example for that, I want you to think about this. I remember listening to Joel Osteen's sermon one day, and he was talking about responsibility as an easy analogy for you to think about that. I want you to think about when you go to the grocery store and put your foods on a cart and you put all your food in your vehicle of choice. Now the question becomes, do you leave the cart right beside your car or do you walk the cart back to the place where the cart should go? Look around, a lot of people leave the carts right where their car is. Even though the cart may be only two or three cars away from where they are, two or three parking spaces from where they are, you see, that's what I'm talking about with the Scrum team in terms of teaching them responsibility. Yeah, we're getting it done. We're doing Scrum. We're doing some wild, wild stuff. But hey, how about you take that cart and put it back where it belongs? The cart doesn't belong here. Let's not be lazy. Now, with that in mind, let's just recap on the four different hats that you need to master to be a legendary Scrum master and master Scrum because that's our job. Scrum master, master Scrum. Yes. Let's recap. We have teacher. Number one, we have facilitator. Number two, we have coach. Number three, and we have mentor. Number four, I hope that helps. Be legendary.